Hello everybody, I am Thrift Store Dave and this week I am going to have a video that's a little bit different from my typical ones in terms of where I source my items that I resell on eBay. Um, I like to go to my local thrift stores, I like to go to Goodwills when I'm on vacation, not locally because they're a little overpriced. However, thanks to some friends like Crow's Thrifty Finds among others, I've discovered Goodwill Online which sources from Goodwills across the country. And I can find things that I can't find locally that have resale value. So I've got boxes of things that I bought. I wanna show you briefly my strategy as to how I acquire things. Then we're gonna go through the things I bought and then we're gonna end with what they sold for. All right, so come along with me. Okay, so here is an example search page that I have. It's for shopgoodwill.com as you can see. It's a very nicely organized site. They've got categories of items that you can search for, featured, newly listed. Under the My Shop Goodwill, you can look at things um, and organize your own purchases by open orders, things that are still in progress. So it's actually a very nicely organized site and you just type in your search criteria, hit return, and things pop up. They're sorted by date and they, um, you know, date and ending time. Some are buy it now, like on eBay, others are auctions. There are snipers, but fewer snipers. So I really like it. And I've been able to get a lot of cool items. So let me show you a few of the things that I got. Okay, one example of an item that I was able to grab was this Gorin Brothers 1333 Minifaw Fur Trapper Hat. At glance, it doesn't look very exciting. So no one bid it on it. It was $12 or $11 plus shipping. So maybe $25 total. Now, if you look at what comps are the same hat is up for a fixed price listing for 250 dollars so when i saw that it was a no-brainer i'm going to put it up for half that see if i can make a quick buck just in comparison and move it along the other two items i have here i'm going to open up in an unboxing right now so you can see what i got and i'll open and discuss them as i um as i view them all right, so now it's time for the fun part, the opening of the goodies that came. I pre-opened the boxes, but did not search them because um, I want to enjoy this as you enjoy it. Um, the first box was a lot of three hats that I bought. Uh, it came from Washington area. Uh, and what drew me to this lot of three hats uh, was mainly one of the hats. I paid $28 for the three, including shipping and taxes, okay? And one of them, was a vintage snapback trucker hat for the Oregon Ducks. Now, when I was looking online, I then did some cross references on eBay to see what these go for. And they are variable. At the very least, it's a $25 hat, which gets my money back for everything. But some of these go up to upwards of $70. So if that pays for my lot and then some, this is why I bought it. Uh, the brim has a little bit of warping, but this is such an old hat, I don't think anyone's gonna care. This thing is awesome. So very happy I got it. It's in as good a shape as it looked online, so that gives some credibility to their um, listings. Um, the other two hats in the lot are no slouch. One was a Weimaraner Club of America hat. Very type of breed of dog, and again, old snapback trucker hat. And my thought is, if there's a niche for this, this is a good fixed price listing. I can put it up for $30 or best offer, see if someone who really likes these type of dogs is willing to pay to demonstrate it. Uh, and then again, that alone would pay back my lot. Last hat is the most mysterious. It was a very like early 90s, late 80s kind of design hat. So very trippy um, pattern. Um, not overworn, but it has the cotton liner interior like hats of that era do. Um, ah, it says Wendy's on the inside. This is a very good surprise. Now I've got to do some fresh homework and see if this was worn um, at a Wendy's in the 90s or if it was a promotion for Wendy's, but, but this is a hot lead. Um, this tag was not there online, so very pleasant surprise. So for $28, I'm gonna list these hats just today at the time I'm filming this. And uh, at the end of this video, hopefully some of these will have sold and I'll be able to recap what they sold for. Okay, so great work on the hats, if I don't mind saying so. On to the big box. This came from the East Coast, whereas the hats came from the West Coast. Lots of items in this lot. There was a um, die cast car that was in there. There were a couple hats and there were some baseball cards. And I know a lot about baseball cards, but not a lot of, about the modern cards. Um, here are the hats. We'll talk about those in a moment. Um, we've got some baseball cards here. 
And these are Babe Ruth and Mickey Mantle cards. Um, they date to 1991, so they aren't original million dollar cards, but they are complete sets. And so um, with all of these inside, my thought is I can sell them as a complete set. Uh, there were rare ones that were actually autographed. I'm looking now very quickly. Um, looks like <laughs> no such luck, but, uh, but that was the other thing is they didn't show every page of all these cards, but they appear to be in mint condition. Um, the Babe Ruth ones, obviously they couldn't have been signed because he wasn't alive in 1991. He died in 1948. Um, but again, complete set. Uh, I could sell these individually or in a, a pair, upwards of fifteen to twenty dollars a piece, I believe. So, um, so these are are going to pay probably for the lot itself because I paid twenty eight dollars with shipping for all of this too. Um, the diecast car I had alluded to is in here as well. It is a Dale Earnhardt Jr. diecast car. A little bit heavy, might cost as much to ship as I'll sell it for, but if it's a $20 car, new in box, again, basically paid for the lot already with more items to go. Uh, digging further, oh cool, there was another little baseball card in here of Luke Gehrig, uh, Conlon Collection 1992 Sporting News. So it's a reprint card, but it's cool, it has nice visual appeal. I'll see what it goes for. I might end up using the case to put a nicer one of my own cards in it, but uh, I consider it free when you look at the cost of the lot. Uh, digging further. Okay, I think that was everything in the box minus um, the hats. There's an invoice in here, of course. So ending with the hats. We'll just rip this bag open. Oh, there was one other interesting thing that I saw. Um, a New York Mets lunch pail, okay? Um, they have white versions of these online, but this is the only black one that I was able to see. So I don't know if there's any comps. It's in very good shape. I believe a Mets fan will want this around spring training if they collect Mets memorabilia. So we'll see. Um, but again, I figure it's free. There's no harm in getting it. The hats that intrigued me. One was a Capitals versus Penguins. It was a winter classic hat. So I don't know how much they go for, but this one has its original tag on it. The interior is clean. I don't think it's ever been worn. So I'm hoping that this will be at least a $10 piece. And then the last one, I didn't get good looks at it, but it was a Miami Heat hat. So NBA basketball, very popular. This one has been lightly worn, so I won't be able to run it in the washer if I want the stickers to be in place. But again, as part of a whole lot, this is just extra. I figure I'll still get some money for this. So maybe 10 bucks for this too. So, um, oh, one last piece, there was a team signed baseball in this lot. And I figured it was a signed or facsimile baseball. Sure enough, on cl close inspection it is. It says Taiwan right there. So this was probably given out at a game. And um, when you look at the different signatures on it, I see Gary Matthews, I see Steve Trout, um, I see Ron Say, I see Ryan Sandberg, and I see um, Lee Smith. So this dates to probably 1983 or 1984, which is when the, these players were on the Cubs team. So even as a facsimile ball, I could either put this up online or on Marketplace and maybe get 15 to 20 bucks for it just because of how old it is. So if we sum this up, we've got a lot of $20 items here. This is probably over $100, $120 worth of stuff that I paid $28 for. Um, the other lot, we'll see what those hats get as well. Um, and then that third lot, which was that one Gorin Brothers hat, I'm hoping to get 120 bucks for. That's what I put it up for. And I even paid to promote it on eBay. So we'll see if that um, yields anything um, later in this video when I go over what has sold in the last couple of weeks since I filmed this part. So stay tuned for this next part of the video. All right, I am back. It's been a little over two months since I last recorded for this video. Uh, which proves that I grossly underestimated how long it might take to sell certain things that you buy online. Um, again, at auction, things might sell within one week, but sometimes if you're putting stuff up for fixed price, you've got to find the right person. You have to have an offer that's sent to you, one that you're willing to accept. I finally had that happen for enough items that um, I now I'm able to share with you some of the profits I've made for some of the lots that I bought. I'm also going to then switch gears briefly and show you some new things that I've bought um, also on shopgoodwill.com. So you can see that I haven't given up. I've just had to switch gears and switch uh, towards more 
reasonable expectations that things could take a little longer to sell, uh, goofy props and all kidding aside. Okay, so some goodies sold so far. These first two items I was able to sell from a lot that I paid a total of $28 for. As you could see, the Miami Heat hat went for $15, and then there was this binder of Line Drive, Mickey Mantle, and Babe Ruth cards from 1991. Even as reprints, because they were in their sets in their binders, I was still able to get $20 for that. So that's 35 bucks for a $28 lot with still four items to go before I am done with that lot. This next hat I sold was a bit of a surprise. It was part of a lot I paid 28 bucks for, mainly to get a vintage 70s Oregon Ducks hat. But this was a club hat for a dog that people love to um, have as a breed. So for $18, I figured that's just bonus on top of what I plan to make from the other Oregon hat. This was a gem that I found tucked into a bunch of hats I bought from Minnesota for $29 with shipping. The Jordan hat alone was new with tags, so I sold that one right away for $32. Already sold a Patagonia hat for $15, so I'm nearing double my money on this lot with a ton of other cool items in it to go, including a Prince hat. After that are a couple of ties that I found in lots that I bought. One lot, um, these aren't described in my um, current video, but these were in the lots I bought since then. One I paid 23 bucks for, one I paid 25 for, and I'm already $30 in, uh, and I have tons of ties left to go of nice, good name brands. And last was the pick that I started with that I was the most excited about. I paid 26 bucks, including shipping for this hat, and I did it. I sold it for $120, and the person who got it loves it. This was win-win for all parties. They saved half of retail. I made 100 bucks. Rock and roll. Okay, so here I am uh, with the latest uh, lot that I bought. It was only nine bucks. No one wanted to bid on it. Shipping was a lot, but for all that I got in, I'm still going to make good money. There were a couple of games in here. One was a Wheaties Breakfast of Champions board game. And so uh, it is open and used. I'm going to make sure it's complete, but these go in the $10 to $20 range. Um, this was an eclectic group, by the way, but sports themed. This I haven't even done homework on yet but it was a throw-in. It was uh, what I thought was a either skater or bike helmet. It turns out it's a uh, Troxel brand equestrian helmet. I did check the date on it because helmets have expiration dates. This is a 2021, so it should be good. And I'm hoping I can make some money on this. I'm gonna do some homework and post as a subtitle what I think it's worth uh, at the time I publish this video. Um, also in this slot were some ski goggles. And I did a brief homework before I bought the lot, and I know these could be 20 plus dollars as well. Uh, and they don't cost much to ship because they're lightweight. And a um, Tasco binocular set. And these can vary in price, but they can be anywhere from 20 to 30 bucks. And these are in very good shape. Uh, so I'm hopeful. Um, and, and again, just two of these items will probably pay for everything, and the rest is just pure gravy. So let's look at some of this gravy. We've got a Cardinals hat. That was just throw-in, but again, it's um, authorized NFL gear. Um, this time you have to sit on until next season because their team is out of the playoffs, but hope springs eternal, and maybe I can get something for it next football season. A few items left. I'm going to dig for a second, make sure there's nothing I'm missing. Ah, yes. There was a baseball in this lot, and I couldn't tell from the pictures what it signified. This is a Colorado Rockies baseball um, with an interesting character on it that says Dan Felix Memorial Fund. So this is from a charitable uh, probably outing. It's beat up. I'm probably going to just give it to my son for batting practice. Uh, a few more interesting pieces. Uh, they were framed Sports Illustrated magazines. This one didn't survive the shipping very well. It cracked. But you can see it's framed and matted. It's a Dan Marino um, Sports Illustrated magazine. I think this might actually be fairly valuable. I've seen comps that range though all over the place from 20 to 80 bucks. I think some of it depends on condition of magazine. Also depends on if it has a sticker from a subscription. This one does not. So you could argue that it's from a um, storefront. So I think that adds value to magazines from what I've done on my research. Uh, there was one other one, and that one also cracked, unfortunately. Uh, I don't want the glass to drop all over the place, but it is a early Wayne Gretzky Sports Illustrated. Also, no um, no markings on it. So I'm going to try to extract these from their frames, keep them with their mats, and see if I can sell them just without frame. 
And um, if they're in good enough shape, I think people may want them. Uh, so again, those those are wild cards, but they're in bonus territory. The last piece is the reason I bought this lot. Oh, sorry, two more things. Second to last piece was an interesting hat. It was an indie racer uh, checker uh, hat, but it's got a signature on it. And uh, I think it says hooligan something. And I don't know if that's a team of something. I have to do homework on it. I figured it's a throw in. So if anyone knows anything about this, great. But we'll see. It's probably just trash. Um, but the last piece was another board game. It's by Avalon Hill, who's known for doing lots of vintage board games. Um, and this is called Stats Pro Baseball. Uh, I don't know how complete it is, but this one dates uh, to 1991. And so uh, it's early 90s. It's the National League version. These go for a good amount of money, sometimes upwards of 50 plus dollars. So I have to look and see what this one specifically will fetch, but got a lot of good things here in the one lot. So the lesson I learned, um, like I said before, uh, was multifold. One is you buy things that may not sell at auction because they're not super hot, but they will sell eventually. You do have to be patient. You have to have some time allotted and enough items uh, capacity in your eBay store to be able to sit on stuff for a little while. That's why I normally prioritize smalls, but sometimes bigger items are fair to have if you know that they're gonna return a good profit. Um, so yeah, time uh, you have to have available. And then you've also gotta um, sometimes just be patient and wait for your profit margins. If something gets outbid, don't get crazy and bid a little more, a little more. It's tempting. There's always that compulsion to call. And so you don't have to always, cause then you're gonna end up with stuff that you're not gonna make any money on. And that kind of sucks some of the fun out of it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed watching some of the ups and downs of this video. Um, hopefully I didn't gain too much weight from the filming at the beginning and the filming present because that was around Thanksgiving to Christmas to New Year's. Um, but yeah, please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you do enjoy some of the items that I'm hunting for and reselling and discussing. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys again soon on Thrift Store Dave. Thanks for watching.